Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about the acidity of terminal alkynes. As you might remember from your uh, earlier studies of acids and bases in organic chemistry, terminal alkynes or, or the hydrogen attached to an alkyne uh, is much more acidic than other um, hydrocarbons might be. Uh, the pKa's of these this functional group is is uh, around 25, where the, the pKa of the alkene is around 44, and uh, the pKa of the alkane is around 50. So there's a big difference in pKa from the terminal alkyne uh, and the alkene, where the alkene and the alkane have pKa values that are much closer together. And so that means that given a, a suitably strong base, well, that's red. Why is the arrow red, Dr. North? Let's fix that. There we go. Black arrow. No. Black arrow. Given a suitably strong base, Uh, at the moment, we don't really care what this base is. We'll talk about appropriate bases in a moment. We can deprotonate that terminal alkyne. And I like to show uh, the carbon label at that terminal alkyne uh, so that I don't feel like I'm forgetting anything. And I'll put in the lone pair while we're at it. These conjugate bases of uh, alkynes are called acetylide anions. Uh, they're named after, uh, they're named as a generic class of anions after the conjugate base of the simplest of alkynes, which is acetylene. And so the conjugate base of acetylene is actually the uh, the ion named acetylide. Let's take that in there, acetylide. So, you know, in, in much the same way, we we often name compounds as derivatives of parent compounds. Uh, acetylide anions refer to a generic class of anions, but they're named after the parent. Uh, anion of acetylene. Before we talk about what kind of bases you might use to deprotonate alkynes, uh, and I know you're thinking pKa of 25, that's still actually a really, really, really weak acid. It's a really weak acid uh, from the general chemistry standpoint, but from an organic chemistry standpoint, this is acidic enough that we can do things with it. Uh, so here we have uh, the three hydrocarbon acids, their pKa's, and I've drawn out their conjugate bases. I haven't put in the carbons or the, the lone pairs here, uh, but I could, uh, in fact, at least, yeah, let's put those in. Show carbon label, show carbon label. And in the case of the, the alkane, the carbon label brought a hydrogen with it. So let me, let me try to, uh, position that hydrogen bond out somewhere so that the negative charge and lone pair aren't sitting on top of each other. All right, and you might remember from uh, a while ago that there are four different uh, factors from, that you can compare when comparing the acid, relative acidity of organic compounds. And of course, what we're really comparing are the, the stabilities of the conjugate bases. We can compare the atom. We can determine the, or the atom that has the negative charge. We can determine whether that negative charge is resonance stabilized. Uh, here, let me do this a different way. We can compare the, I can't spell, we can compare the atom. We can compare whether they have resonance. Uh, we can compare whether there is induction. We 
why is that underlined? What happened there? Okay, good. And we can compare uh, for the orbital. Uh, and in sense, in this case, there we go. Okay. Uh, in this case, they're all on the same atom. They're all in carbon atoms. There's no resonance stabilization here. I'll let you uh, convince yourself of that. Uh, there's no difference in inductive stabilization here. There are only alkyl groups and hydrogens around. So we must only be concerned about the orbital that the lone pair or that negative charge is in. So now what we want to look at actually is the hybridization of the carbon atom where that negative charge is. Go through again and show all of my carbon labels so we don't confuse ourselves. And remember, there's a hydrogen here on the alkane. Um, the alkyne is in an sp hybridized orbital, and I've kind of drawn what an sp hybridized orbital looks like. sp2 hybridized orbital for the alkene, sp3 hybridized orbital for the alkane. Uh, and if you remember from uh, your first study of hybridized orbitals, uh, sp3 hybridized orbitals have a really big lobe. They've got three p orbitals in the mix, so they look more like p orbitals. sp2 hybridized orbitals only have two p orbitals in the mix, so they look a little bit less like p orbitals. sp orbitals only have one p orbital in the mix. So actually, the, the big lobe on the sp orbital is a lot smaller. And that means that uh, the negative charge closer to the nucleus of this atom uh, than it would be for the other two orbitals. And because the nucleus is positively charged, that sp orbital stabilizes the, car, the, the negative charge uh, much more than it would for the other uh, for the other two atoms. Let's talk about another example uh, where orbital matters, and that example is in uh, some nitrogen-containing compounds. Let's, uh, and, and I actually want to look at the, ooh, that doesn't look great. I actually want to look at the protonated nitrogen compounds, and, and that's because when we start adding things, adding bonds, oops, I don't want rubidium, I just want R for generic alkyl groups. When we start adding bonds to nitrogen, when we get up to the, to the carbon-nitrogen triple bond, uh, since... I don't want that. There we go. Since nitrogen only likes three bonds, the carbon nitrogen triple bond, that nitrogen has no hydrogens on it by itself. So in order to, to compare acidities, we need to protonate it. Let's our group out here. Now it turns out that uh, the pKa's of these things follow the same pattern as the pKa's of the, pro of the hydrocarbons. Uh, I've shown them in the reverse order, so the you know, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Or, or let's see. In the protonated amine, which is the first example, that nitrogen is sp3 hybridized, and the pKa uh, of that protonated functional group is around 11, depending on what the R group is. Uh, the second molecule is a protonated imine, and its pKa is around 9. The, the nitrogen there is sp2 hybridized. And just like with the carbon example, there's not a large difference between sp3 and sp2 but there is a gigantic difference between sp2 and sp. So in the protonated nitrile, 
next thing. Our SP hybridized, and the pKa is around, for it, negative 10. So there is a massive difference in acidity between SP and SP2, just like there was uh, for the hydrocarbon. So for the nitrogen example, the pKa difference between SP2 and SP3 is almost 20 pKa units. Uh, for the carbon, again, it's almost 20 pKa units. Uh, so it's a very big difference between SP2 and SP3. As a final topic in this video, I want to talk about choice of base. If we were intending to purposefully make the acetylide anion, then we need to choose a base that will deprotonate the alkyne with its pKa of 25. Uh, so we want to look for we want to look for bases that that have uh, bases that have conjugate acids. Aka greater than 25, and, and actually we're looking for for pKa probably much greater than 25 because we want to have a fair, fairly good uh, feeling that that deprotonation ha has gone all the way to completion. Uh, a really common base that is used for this purpose is sodium amide. Uh, sodium amide is, is the, the compound NaNH2, not 32, typo, NaNH2. And then um, the pK, the, the conjugate acid of the, the NH2 minus anion is conjugate acid for this is ammonia. And uh, ammonia has a, a pKa of 38. So ammonia or amide, uh, so anion, usually a sodium amide, is a particularly good base for deprotonating terminal alkynes. Uh, You might also you might also see sodium hydride uh, as a good base to deprotonate terminal alkynes. Uh, sodium hydride has the formula NaH, and so this actually contains the uh, H minus anion. We're normally we're more used to the H plus anion, uh, but you can certainly have H minus anions. Uh, well, it's hydrogen with a lone pair and a negative charge. Conjugate acid of H plus or of H minus is H2, hydrogen gas, and the pKa of hydrogen gas is 36. Uh, one additional really strong base that organic chemists like to use is something called butyl lithium. This is a little bit different kind of compound. We often abbreviate butyl lithium, BU for the butyl group, LI for the lithium ion. Uh, but unlike the other two compounds, butyl lithium is generally regarded as a covalent compound. Uh, it's not an ionic compound with the butyl anion and the lithium cation. Uh, we'll talk about these sort of organometallic compounds and how they uh, get formed in a little bit when we talk about the uh, we talk about the, the reactions of alcohols, but even though it is an organic, even though it's a, a, a not an ionic compound, you can think of it as the conjugate base of butane, and the conjugate base of butane then has a pKa 
don't know butane specifically off the top of my head, but butane is an alkane, so its pKa is around 50. All three of these bases uh, and, and other similar compounds, for example, there are other derivatives where instead of having NH2, we have R groups on the nitrogen. Um, other alkyl lithium compounds will work as well. Uh, but these are three representative bases that work out pretty well. In the next video, we're going to talk about uh, the way we can use the conjugate base of alkynes uh, to synthesize more complicated alkynes. Thanks for watching.